Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. Well, I recently picked up my very first case muskrat. I don't collect a lot of muskrats, but I thought, you know what, it's time to get a muskrat. And one of the driving forces uh, for me to pick up this muskrat was because a viewer asked the question about case muskrats. And uh, I will get to that in just a second, but I wanted to show you this knife real quick. This is an... Uh, uh, Corallon, it is in cat's eye Corallon. So most likely this is a knife that was made uh, by Michael Prater or assembled by Michael Prater. Uh, and it is in the Slant Bolster series. Uh, the knife uh, itself was produced in 2016. I do not know when it was rehandled uh, by uh, Prater. But here's the uh, blade edge, as you can see there. Premier edition, cat's eye one of 2,500, and you can see here the pattern number, which, uh, well, not the pattern number, the year of production based on the dots, uh, that comes out for 2016 based on the little, uh, the, the case uh, stamp there, and then the number of dots that are left. So this is a 2016, and is that right? 2014. Yeah, so it starts in uh, 2010, uh, two, starts in 2010 and then 11, 12, 13, 14. 2014, uh, based on the fact that there's six uh, um, marks left. There's uh, five X's and one dot left. So this is a 2014. It's got the bomb shield there. And then when we flip it around to the other side, we see the pattern number, which says USA Muskrat SS. And that was the question um, that a viewer had. It's like, why doesn't Case put a proper pattern number on their muskrat? Because this is a 47 pattern knife. Uh, that's the frame that is on here the 47 pattern. It's a three and seven eighths inch frame. It is used uh, for a two bladed knife and also a, um, a three bladed knife. It's used for a stockman. If this were a stockman, the uh, pattern number would be um, 4347 for, for the type of material here. For instance, this material is uh, a synthetic, a smooth synthetic handle. And the number case uses for that is the number four. Like we have here a bone handled knife and case uses a bone. For bone handled knives, case uses the number six. It has two blades, so this would be a 6247. Both of them are on the same frame as you can see here. Now, when we open this one up, this is the bird hunter's knife we see that it has the pattern number 6247H. The H is for the hook. So this is a 6247H bird hunter's knife uh, by Case. Now Case does have a two-bladed knife. You don't see it too often. And that is the 6247, or the in this case, it would be a, a uh, 40, to 47. Um, if it were in the uh, smooth acrylic, if it was in bone, it would be a 6247. And that is their opposite end jackknife. And the opposite end jackknife has this same blade on it. It has the long clip that you see here, which is often referred to as the muskrat clip or muskrat blade. And then the other blade that the uh, opposite end jack has is a uh, pin blade and so the number for that knife ends in 247 but we see here this is a 247 h so they could have used could they have made the muskrat the um it, could they have made this the 4247m for muskrat or 4247 uh, C for clip.
But unlike the hook blade, which could be used on other knives, this is a very common blade that is used on many knives already. And they would be adding a special designation for just this one knife pattern. And I'm assuming they just felt that that wasn't necessary. Why not just call it a muskrat? Now, from what I understand, uh, some early muskrats um, just had USA and stainless steel over here and did not have anything stamped on the blade. Um, and it was just known as the muskrat knife. And it does have two blades that are the same. And from what I also have heard is uh, some early muskrats actually had the same blade, the main blade with the case stamping and even the dots and everything else on the secondary blade too. And I've even heard stories that in some cases, the case muskrat will have different dots for the blades. So uh, it's like they used an older blade and just threw it onto the knife uh, to make the muskrat knife. So it's a knife that was not commonly made by, uh, by case at one time, I'm assuming. And so it was kind of like a special edition kind of knife. And I think that's why they just decided uh, later to just not even bother giving it a, uh, a pattern number and just started stamping it muskrat. And uh, it kind of stuck. So I think that's what it comes down to is the pattern number for the muskrat is the word muskrat. Um, it is built on a 47 frame, but they don't mark it as a 47 frame or anything like that. And so there's less information on a muskrat when you think about it, because with this one, you know, 6247, you know what kind of handle material is on the knife. With the muskrat, you never really know what the handle material is going to be on the knife because the, uh, or you can't determine the handle material on the knife based off of the pattern number because that first number is not there. In any case, enough about that. Uh, the uh, reason the muskrat does not have a pattern number is because the name muskrat is the pattern number. It is a decision that Case made and they've stuck with it. And I think these days they look at it as just one more thing to uh, use as a sales pitch. Um, let's move on to this knife itself because it's pretty interesting. Now, before we begin with the um, the uh, case, let me show you this one here. This is a Schrade Improved Muskrat. And this is like one of the very early Schrades. You see there, Schrade in New York. And I went over what an improved muskrat was and everything else in my video on muskrat knives and also the development of the muskrat knife. And if you notice here, you notice what we have here, you got the uh, the brass liners and then you've got a brass spacer going down the middle here, uh, which separates the knives. So basically you are combining two knives together here with a full spacer in between the two blades so that you can uh, prevent blade rub and everything else. And that's the way you see most muskrats made these days. You notice that? You see that? And here is a Rough Rider. Now this Rough Rider is basically built on the same 47 frame that Case uses, uh, except it's by Rough Rider and it is in, um, made in China. And you notice you got the brass spacer running down the middle there. And again, it is a full brass spacer going down the middle. Uh, case does not do that. And um, I'm not exactly sure why, but it also seems like it really doesn't matter with the knife. So what you have is no spacer between the two back springs, see that? You, do, you still have the brass liners on either side, but there's no spacer between them. Notice the difference. What that does is allow you to have a slightly slimmer build of a knife. Notice also that, that the case is just a slight bit shorter than the uh, improved muskrat by Schrade. It is the same length as your, uh, as your uh, 
Rough Rider though. Both of them were built on a three and seven eighths inch frame. They also both had the same slant to it, you know, the same serpentine frame and everything else going on. And the blades are very similar in shape as well. Not exactly the same, but similar. The uh, case actually has a little bit more belly in its muskrat blade than the Rough Rider does. Okay, let's just talk about the, uh, the case now. Uh, what I liked about this right away was the fact that it is in the, uh, the Corallon, the, uh, the synthetic Corallon, uh, and uh, it is in the cat's eye. I like cat's eye, and uh, cat's eye is actually a type of stone, and it's usually more gold and black. This one is uh, gold and a little bit of dark greenish black, and then also some green in there. And it's just got some really good color going on with it. And it really pops really nicely. As you can see here uh, from the, the blade etch, or actually this is more like a pad stamping. It's an ink stamping. It's not gonna come off too easily. Premier Edition, Cat's Eye, one of 2,500. Uh, we already covered all that and uh, the year that it was produced, which was uh, 2014. Um, that is on the main blade. You can tell the main blade and what is the top of the knife simply because this is the front, because this has the shield. If there was no shield on that, the only way you would know which is the front is by the, the shape of the serpentine handle here. The fact that the, uh, the, the bottom end kind of slants upward the front end is more or less straight. We flip it around. There is no blade etch on the secondary blade. It is marked muskrat. We already covered all of that. These blades are as tight as can be. Look at that. There is absolutely no wobble in there whatsoever. There is also absolutely no blade rub going on because each blade is working off of its own spring. That is really what made the improved muskrat and improved muskrat, the fact that each blade was working off of its own spring. The earlier muskrats were a single blade or a single spring knife with both blades operating off of the same uh, spring. And because of that, uh, the spring would get weak and also um, you had a much more potential for blade rub and also the blades ended up being skinnier. What uh, Case did was they still have about the same size back spring going on, um, but as long as you lay the blades in there straight, you're not going to get any blade rub because they're not sharing a spring. There's still two springs going on. So it opens up really well. As you notice, there is a slight difference in the, the angle of the knife blades once they're open. One of them is dropping a little bit more. That's the back side. It drops a little bit more than the front one does. So there is a little bit of an angle to uh, the blades. I don't know if that um, makes much of a difference when skinning an animal, and that's what this is really used for. It is a small game skinner. I mean, literally, it was designed to uh, skin muskrats and other small animals, weasels and things like that. Um, and apparently it works really well for doing that. That's why you had the big long blades going on. Um, what I like about this one though is just the slant bolsters. It's a, it's a really nice looking design. The build quality is just fantastic on this. Um, you can see there is absolutely no gapping going on. Um, the brass liners are nice and flush with everything. The Corlon is well glued. There are no pens in the Corlon. That is very typical of what Michael Prater does with this Corlon. There's never pens in it, it seems. However, the shield is nicely recessed into the, uh, the Corlon. The transition is not bad at all. I mean, I can feel where it goes from nickel silver to Corlon but it is a smooth transition. Um, more or less, what you can really feel is the coolness of the nickel silver and the warmness of the Corallon as you pass over it. And this is nice and smooth here too, really smooth. Um, there is a little bit of an angle here, you know, a little bit of an edge. So I guess uh, it could have been rounded a little bit better, but it matches up perfectly with the, uh, with the edge of the uh, 
uh, the bolster. So that's really what it is matching up to. And when you're holding the knife, it feels really good in the hand. So not a real problem with any of that. Um, not too slippery on the Corallon. I mean, yeah, you can slide across it, but I would not consider it uh, extremely slippery or, or anything like that. And let's face it, the knife really is designed uh, more as a showpiece with the Corallon as opposed to an actual working knife, but it could definitely work as a knife. Uh, you're hearing that pop in there. That is the kick hitting the back spring. The blade is coming nowhere near the uh, back springs on this knife. Man, that is really clean inside there too. Yeah, everything about this knife is uh, really impressive to me. I really like the way this looks. I like the build of it and everything else. Uh, Case did a really good job with the uh, frame and the blades, getting everything lined up. And Prater did a really good job rehandling it. So all in all, I'm very impressed with this. I've been impressed with every knife I've gotten uh, from Michael Prater's uh, workshop. And uh, I'm really impressed with the uh, build quality of the uh, Case Muskrat. Um, I knew it was a good frame when I got this one here, the Bird Hunter, a while back. Um, and now I'm really happy to have a uh, another one in the uh, actual muskrat. I would love to find a uh, a two blade opposite end jack. Um, those uh, seem to be a little scarcer than this, and uh, I might have to pick up a number 47 uh, Stockman because I do like the uh, size of this frame, three and seven eighths inches long. In any case, uh, with that said, I'll leave you with some pictures and uh, we'll call it a day. Thank you once again for dropping by 
and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with Tobias. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.